Hello guys, so in this video I want to talk about multivariable functions. First I want to give you definitions and a couple of simple examples. After that we're going to talk about how to sketch multivariable functions and we're going to discuss the generalization of a derivative to the case when we're going to take derivative for multivariable functions or in other words we're going to find partial derivatives. And before we're going to continue, if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and choose the ring bell to receive all notifications and don't forget to check out my other videos. Thank you for watching. So first, let's remind about uh, us like what is the definition of a regular function. Before, like in calculus class, we studied that if you have a function y is equal to f of x, it means you want to take point A and find the corresponding value for your output, which is given by some formulas uh, f of x. And the idea is that is for every input, you're going to have a unique output. The first standard uh, non-example of a function is going to be a circle. The reason why is if you're going to take x is equal to 0, then you're going to get two outputs, 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. And they're going to be the outputs because like, those two points are going to satisfy that equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So that's why for the input x is equal to 0, I'm going to get two outputs, and that's not a function. Okay, so, but let's right now try to generalize and introduce a new variable z. So what I'm going to uh, do, I'm going to make my x, uh, y plane just be a parallel plane to the floor, and then I'm going to take two points. And the idea is the same. For those two points, I'm going to consider the third point along the axis, and uh, I'm going to find that third point by using some formula f of x, y. And if you will now visualize that for every point inside kind of that small square, you're going to get your outputs, then you're going to have some sort of surface. And that surface is going to be kind of your function f of x. And again, like if you're going to generalize the previous non-example, then my circle is going to become a sphere. And you can see for that sphere, if you're going to take x is equal to 0, then for that point, I'm going to get two outputs, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, negative 1. And again, they're going to satisfy my original equation of a sphere. And since for that input, I have two outputs, then that is not a function. Okay, and let's do like our first examples. Uh, so the first example, I'm going to take z is equal to f of x, uh, y is equal to one. And again, like I can just name my function uh, z is equal to f of x, y, because this is how I'm going to find my component z by using uh, that rule f of x, y. And let's kind of remind ourselves how we did that before in um, x, y plane. So in this case, I have just y is equal to zero, but y is equal to zero, you can think about this y plus zero times x is equal to one. And you can see that in that equation, x can be anything. So that's why if you're going to take point 0, 1 and then point take 1, 1, then both of these points are going to satisfy the equation of the line. So that's why I'm going to draw a parallel line uh, to the x-axis. And the same idea is going to be for our like surface. So in this case, I'm going to have the equation z plus 0 times x plus 0 times y is equal to 1, which is the equation of the plane. And the idea is the same, x and y can be anything. So that's why in x direction and y direction, I can just trace my point. And that's why I'm going to get that plane z is equal to 1. Okay, so let's do another example when I'm going to take z is equal to 2 minus x. And this example is pretty interesting because right now I have equation of the plane about how the plane looks like. First observation that you can see that there is no y component. So in other words, like what we can, we can visualize that we're going to take our plane and bisect this plane by x, z plane. And we're going to find the intersection of that x, z plane uh, with our original plane. So if I'm going to take x is equal to 0, I'm going to get z is equal to 2. And I have a point. When x is equal to 2, then I'm going to obtain z is equal to 0, so I have another point. And to find the equation or the graph of the line, you need just two points, and I'm going to stretch the uh, straight line. And then that red line is going to be part of the plane. And I know that y can be anything. So that means that if I'm going to just take that line segment and trace along y-axis, then those points are going to satisfy the original equation. So those points, or like the set like the union of those points is going to be actually the equation of the plane so we're going to have like this tilted plane uh, and again i got, got this plane because i have the equation z is equal to 2 minus x and there is no y component so it means it's just enough in, to find the intersection of that surface with x z plane and then you're going to visualize the whole plane by taking that intersection and tracing along the variable uh, on which the equation doesn't depend in this case that equation doesn't depend on a y variable so that's why i'm going to have that plane but we cannot like sketch all the function just by guessing it so 
or like just using free variables, sometimes because we have equations which involve all the variables. So in that case, we're going to use sections. So imagine that you're going to take your Z planes, uh, which are going to be parallel to X, Y planes. Then, then you're going to take your X planes parallel to Y, Z planes and the same Y planes. So for every different type of the planes, what we can do, we're going to find these sections of our uh, surface. Or in other words, we're going to find the intersection of the plane and of our surface. And then we're going to visualize and to graph our surface by just putting the sections together. So imagine that you have a sphere, uh, then when you're going to take a plane, then intersection of the plane with a sphere, if the plane is going to be above the sphere's empty set, then it's going to be at some point uh, a point. And then if you're going to move your plane along a sphere from positive z direction to negative z direction, then you're going to have a point, a small circle, bigger, bigger circle, smaller circle, smaller circle, a point, and, and then empty set. So this is the idea of the section. So let's take, I think, like one of the most popular and one of the most important example, z is equal to 2 minus x squared minus y squared. Let's try to visualize how the surface is going to look like. And first I'm going to consider like z section. So in other words, I'm going to take the planes z is equal to k and then just try to cut my surface and see what this intersection look like. If I'm going to take k is equal to 3, then I'm going to write this as z is equal to 3 and z is equal to 2 minus x squared minus y squared. But in that case, how do I find the intersection? So those two equations are going to give me an intersection. And as I discussed before, take a sphere and z is equal to 0, we're going to have x, y plane. And then if you're going to intersect x, y plane with your sphere, you're going to have that red circle. So that's why like the intersection is going to be given some sort of like one dimensional curve. Okay, but let's try to visualize or like to solve, to figure out what is my intersection in this case. I'm going to get the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to negative 1, but then there's no solution. So it means if I'm going to take z is equal to 3, then it is not going to intersect my surface. The intersection is going to be empty. But let's just replace my 3 with k. And then I'm going to obtain the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 minus k. And you can see if I'm going to take k is equal to, for example, 2, then I'm going to have x squared plus y squared is equal to 0. But the only solution is x is and y is equal to 0. So, but x and y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 2. I'm going to get just 1.002. But if I'm going to take, for example, um, like, I don't know, like k uh, equal to 0, then I'm going to obtain x squared plus y squared is equal to square root of 2 squared or another word like 2. But that is going to be a circle with a radius of square root of 2. And in other words, I'm going to have a circle when z is equal to 0, so in x, y plane, uh, which is going to be centered at 0, 0 with radius of square root of 2. And then observe that if I'm going to change my k between 2 and 0, my circle is, gonna, from, is going to become from the dot, it's going, to have, it's going to be bigger, bigger, and bigger. So I'm going to, for example, obtain for k is equal to 1 a circle uh, with k is equal to 1, with the radius 1. But we don't have surface yet. so. If you have like one sections and you can visualize it, let's use other sections. In this case, I'm going to choose like x, x planes. And let's take the most popular one, when x is equal to zero. I'm going to get just yz plane. And when x is equal to zero, you can see that uh, I'm going to have an intersection of yz plane and my surface, which is going to be given by the equation z is equal to two minus y squared which is parabola in our case. And I'm going to have just that parabola that points down. And just take our previous sections. When k is equal to 2, 1, and 0, I'm going to get a point, a circle, a bigger circle, and a bigger circle. So in other words, I'm going to have a paraboloid. So you can see like the surface is going to be given by z sections, which are just as circles, and my x section, and you can check that your y section are going to be given by parabolas that are going to point down. But the only difference, if I'm going, for example, take my x section and move to the right, then my parabola is going to be uh, shifted down. And that's it. This is going to be a paraboloid. Okay, so just try to go and figure out uh, and solve, uh, not like solve, but sketch some other surfaces. But instead of just trying to guessing and you know, like, and use different approaches, try to use this approach. Try to use like section and see what you're going to get. Okay, so and I'm going to be done for today and soon I'm going to post a new video when I'm going to continue to talk about uh, multivariable functions.